The first thing I would do is I would swap out your cutting board, especially and primarily if it's a plastic cutting board, just like this one. This is one I've been using for years. You can see it, right? You can see these marks on it, right? You can see the marks. I've been cutting things with knives on this, but literally you see the damage to the board. And there have been recent studies that have suggested and shown that when we use plastic cutting boards, the plastic from the board can literally get into the food. We're talking about something called microplastics. It's exactly as it sounds, small plastic fragments. The problem with this is it gets into our food. We ingest it into our body. Oh my God, more on that. Okay, don't go anywhere. So you may be saying, all right, well, what am I supposed to use instead of this plastic cutting board that could leach plastic uh, particles into my food? Well, something a lot better is going to be uh, this big guy here. This is my wooden cutting board. Um, got this from Target. Not mad, just the truth. Got this years and years ago. It's a wooden cutting board. This is a, certainly a safer option, okay? There are other types of cutting boards that you can get as well, but swapping out the plastic one is definitely the way to go to uh, minimize your risk of microplastics. Microplastics, this is actually something big. So what's happening is, you know, we got water bottles and we got plastic this and plastic that. When all this plastic gets into landfills, this is one way, uh, gets into landfills and, you know, sits there and seeps, those plastics degrade and sort of seeps into soil and seeps into water. And then we see these plastic particles, the degraded plastic, we find it in the oceans, we find it in animals, we find it in fish, it ends up in our food supply supply. It ends up in our body. And y'all, I am not making this up. It's a real thing. In fact, we know that microplastics are very likely in all of our bodies. Like, I mean, we've, we've found microplastics literally in our heart, our blood vessels. We found them in the intestines. We found them in all sorts of places in our body. Like I'm all hot and bothered about this because I think this is a really big thing and something to, to be in mind. And then I'm gonna tell you two more ways to cut back on microplastics in your uh, environment. So don't go anywhere. But um, there was a recent study that showed that microplastics were actually found in carotid plaques. Um, and of the patients who had these microplastics in their carotid plaques, they had a higher incidence of higher risk of uh, uh, heart attack, stroke and death compared to the patients who did not have microplastics in their carotid plaques. So there you go. Second thing you can do is um, to reduce your exposure to microplastics. So I'll be honest, I get bottled water, but I'm going to cut back on this because you know what? These reusable sort of single use water bottles and like single use plastics, this is not great for the, this is horrible for the environment horrible for the environment, right? And contributes to microplastics. And even just drinking water from a water bottle can cause you to ingest microplastics. And I should say, where, how do we get these in our body? Well, we eat them, eat microplastics in food, like when we're cutting up fruit and vegetables and whatever, or whatever on the cutting board. Uh, we can inhale microplastics. We can drink microplastics. We can breathe in. Um, literally, microplastics are all over the place. So instead of, say, a plastic plastic water bottle, okay? Instead of doing plastics, minimize your microplastics exposures by getting like a stainless steel reusable uh, water bottle. There's plenty other types you can get. doesn't have to be stainless steel, but just not plastic, okay? So that's the second way that you can uh, minimize your exposure. And then um, I'm going to give you the third, but before I do that, let me tell you some of the reasons why microplastics are bad. Now, um, you may be saying, okay, well, microplastics, well, what's the big deal? Well, the problem is, if you can imagine, like, we're kind of, we have micro, we have plastic in our body. Like, that's, it's not supposed to go there. But even more so than that, think about some of the things that plastics may be made up of. They're made up of things like BPAs, phthalates, um, PFAs, other chemicals. And many of these chemicals, which are used to help make plastic, uh, we've determined are what we call endocrine disruptor chemicals, meaning these are chemicals that sort of can affect our endocrine system, our hormones, our reproductive system. It's actually a really big deal. 
will. So when we're thinking about our children and stuff like that, there's a lot we don't know. But I mean, like, I certainly say it's better to not have that exposure if we can prevent it, okay? The other thing is, is that these microtoxins themselves can carry toxins and bugs and germs and things like that, right? It becomes a, a vehicle for which it can transport stuff, which we don't want. Um, so many reasons. And I should also, con like, I should say this again, there's just a lot we don't really know about how microplastics affect the body because we are really just starting to learn about this. Microplastics, by the way, are particle uh plastic particle pieces that are less than five millimeters in diameter. Um, and yes, they get into our body and they can harm our reproductive system, endocrine system, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Let me give you the third way. And by the way, there's plenty of other ways to reduce microplastics in your environment. It also helps reduce pollution. So I have like, I've had these forever, like these plastic bowls. Um, I've got multiple sizes that like multiple sizes. I put them in the dishwasher, blah, 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 blah. All this stuff that in microwave, all this stuff you're not supposed to do because by the way, heat tends to sort of degrade plastic. Okay. Uh, and may promote the leaching out of microplastics and things like that. Um, so keep that in mind, but I use, I'm, I'm, I'm using plastic all over the place, which is not, which is not the best. It's not ideal. Uh, a better way to go is with glass. Okay. May not be as convenient. I get it. I get it. I get it. But is the better way to go? Yeah. Glass. There's also stainless steel. There are other different containers you can use. And this is the thing. You don't have to make all these changes all at once. You don't have to do every single one. Like you don't have to throw out every plastic container that you have. Okay. I mean, you can start small, do some reading about microplastics. Uh, read about kind of what we are thinking and how we are thinking this affects our body. By the way, what I mentioned is like literally just the tip of the iceberg because, you know, whatever. This is the tip of the iceberg. So such a such a big deal. But what you can do is start sort of swapping out your plastics for glass. What I want to know is how many of you are like ahead of the game, at least ahead of me and doing this already? How many of you are really onto this kick? How many of you are sort of conscious about microplastics and sort of the pollution level in general? Write down in the comments and also please write other suggestions and things we can do to minimize plastics in our environment. Things that you found, like obviously things like reducing um, single use plastic bags. And I mean, plastic is everywhere. Reducing that and using reusable things is certainly a more sustainable way to go for that and for minimizing plastics. Write in the comments what you do. Guys, this has been a big eye-opener to me. I'm going to talk more about microplastics and stuff like that. Literally, I mean, see these marks on my cutting board? See, look at all that. I mean, like, it's just cutting board cut up. Where do those pieces go? Probably don't all go in my food, but I'm sure some have. You know, uh, Guys, I'm Dr. Jen Caudill, practicing family physician, on-air health expert, and video creator. I do daily videos on pretty much everything. Please like and follow my page on Facebook, on YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel. Click the little bell for updates. I do daily videos. Please check me out on YouTube, WhatsApp, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, ah, all the things, TikTok, <laughs> you name it. Also, I'm at um, LinkedIn at, link, oh, no, no, uh, my website. Go to my website, drjencoddle.com to sign up for my free weekly health newsletter. Guys, I'm Dr. Jen. All right. Talk to you soon.